Welcome to Bombers Workshop. Thanks so much for joining me here once again. It is always nice to have you back. This time we're going to go back to the old roots and focus on another Suzuki build. We're going to do a half length roof rack and expedition basket build for a first gen that is 1989 to 1998 Suzuki Sidekick. Um, I also offer a full length version of this rack and basket, um, but we'll focus on the half length uh, setup this time. Both are available on my brand new website. Do check it out. Uh, that's balmerfab.com. It now features an online store, which is very exciting for me. And some of the items are available for nationwide, Canada-wide shipping. Um, this basket is not available for shipping yet. It's available for local install only, but it is something that I do plan on offering for shipping uh, in the future. So stay tuned if that's something you're interested in. But for those of you who want to do a DIY build and uh, put together something like this yourself, there's a ton of good information coming up. So stay tuned. Uh, even dimensions are included for the most part. Um, and if there's anything that I didn't include that you'd like to find out about, then please mention it in the comments and I will do my best to, uh, to accommodate. Thanks for watching. So I begin my roof rack builds much like I be begin most of my builds, and that is by starting with mounts. So with Sidekick, I mount my roof rack into kind of stock locations. I've got a welding blanket in the way right now because I've done a bit of tack welding. This is a fiberglass welding blanket, and they are super handy. They uh, not only protect against sparks, uh, but they also allow for a little bit of padding if you need to sit something on top of it. And they also fold up really nicely. For instance, this could be a real pain because I need to get to something right underneath there. But with a nice thick fiberglass blanket, I can just fold it and it will pretty much generally stay in position. Really handy. So anyway, in these locations on a stock vehicle, you will find plastic caps. And those plastic caps fit in just like that. All you got to do to remove them is gently pry them out. They may be glued in a little bit with some um, foam adhesive tape, uh, but you just pry them out of there. And there's two little pins which will probably break when you remove them, but you're not going to reuse the piece of plastic, so you don't worry about that. And that exposes the area that we use for our brackets. I don't actually use these holes because they're too large a diameter for the rivets that I want to use. Uh, if you're using riv nuts, you could go ahead and use those. But for rivets, I use a wider spacing, as you see here. So those are just 3 16 holes that I've drilled through there into the vehicle and then riveted in place. And then I have a piece of my bracket that wraps around the side, and again, that'll be drilled and riveted. This one's getting installed by the customer, so I'm going to do as little riveting initially as I can, and I'll leave the rest of the drill, drilling and riveting to him. Uh, not because I feel like being lazy, but just because we want to make sure the fit-up is perfect and... Uh, when he goes to put it on finally, it'll be, it'll be best if he drills those, those holes out himself. So that's my, uh, my rear mount. I'll go over how I put those together, and I will have another one on the bench for this side. And then I also have a mount up on top of the B-pillar. This is for my half-length basket, so that's only going to cover basically from the back of the roof to just in front of the B-pillar. It uh, measures, I believe, about 44 inches by 38 inches, something like that. Uh, I do have a full length uh, rack available as well, which also mounts into the A pillars here, but that is not what we're doing on this build. So stay tuned for another video of that, perhaps. Anyway, let's have a look at the B pillar mount. And there it is. It's just simply a piece of four by four by eighth inch thick plate that has a couple little very gentle bends put in it so that it matches the shape of the roof. And then I have welded, tack welded, a um, little piece of one and a quarter inch by 090 wall tube to it. And I have notched that so that it sits at 90 degrees to the vehicle. And that's going to cradle the crossbar which goes across here. We have to add the other side mount yet, but I will show you how I made those mounts before we go that far. So let's have a wander over to the bench. And here's the components I have left for this side. And then I've got a complete set for another basket that I'm going to build. So starting with the, the rear bracket, this is a six and a half inch long piece of one inch by eighth inch flat bar, or eighth by one would be the better way to say it. I have drilled holes where appropriate. These are, if you have a look at the vehicle, these 
wind up above and below the stock holes, um, respectively. And I've also made a little angle on there, and that angle will match. Oops, sorry, that angle will match the vehicle nicely. So that bolts in there, or, or rivets in there, I should say. And once I've got that riveted in, then I place my wraparound piece onto the vehicle in a position where it sits nice and flat, and then I tack weld it in place. And the wraparound piece is made from a piece of 1 8 by 2 inch flat bar, 5 inches long, and it is bent around a piece of 1 and 3 quarter inch tube. Uh, now I believe I did some time lapse of that, so I'll probably throw that in here somewhere. But basically um, what I do is I tack weld this end of the, uh, the flat bar to a tube that's in the vise, and then I hammer it around that guy uh, and create a nice radius. You don't have to be a metal artist to make a nice radius on a piece of flat bar with some rudimentary tools. Pretty straightforward. Now, this, the uh, back of the Suzuki is not a perfect one and three quarter inch radius, and it's not a smooth radius either. It's not a consistent radius, meaning it's actually tighter here than it is over here. So it's a challenging bend to get perfect, uh, and I don't go for perfection. I, what I want to wind up with is a nice flat mount on the side of the body that fits really clean like it does there and I'm gonna have a bit of a gap in here and I'm not too worried about that. I do hammer the bend so that it is asymmetrical and so that it fits the vehicle as best as I can make it fit but I'm satisfied with that. Uh, another thing because the back of the vehicle is on an angle it's not sitting at 90 degrees like this it's tilted in so that makes the side tab go down on an angle um, compensating for that would be extremely challenging, so I, I just leave it like that. It, uh, it works really well, it's functional, and uh, I don't think it looks bad at all. So that's how I create the rear mount. And I always like to uh, drill and rivet one hole at a time when I'm creating mounts, just so that there's no opportunity for that mount to move around, uh, and that way you get a nice perfect fit up uh, for all your rivets and you don't have any slop. And then the B-pillar mount, or the top mount, again, is just a piece of 4 inch by 4 inch plate, 1 inch thick, or sorry, 1 eighth inch thick. I then put the, um, uh, the plate in the vise at a point where it's along these lines here, so about, mm, about an inch and a half into the vise, and then I hammer those down as separate tabs. Uh, I'll do a time lapse of that so you can see what I'm talking about, but basically it just takes a little finagling to make sure that all four points match down on the uh, B-pillar nicely and you get it as smooth and as clean a fit up as possible. Once you've got that and you're satisfied with it, you're just going to place your, uh, your um, support, which is a two and a half inch long piece of one and a quarter inch tube with a 90 degree notch in it. And because you've got those nice cross lines, let me just turn on the flash. And because you've got that nice cross, it helps you to really perfectly center the, um, the support on the bracket or on the mount. And if you want to make sure that you're sitting correct this way and this way, a good way to do that is to take a piece of scrap tube, sit it in there, and then you can see very easily how well lined up you are. Once you're very happy with it, you remove your tube, make sure you're centered on your X, and then I choose to tack on all four lines. And there you go. Then you can place that on the uh, on the B pillar. I go about three quarters of an inch in from this line mark your holes. I would personally, I like to um, uh, center punch and drill one out, rivet it in place, and then from there center punch right through or drill right through the, um, the holes in the bracket to mount the rest of it. And again, I've only mounted this in two places. I'll let the customer drill the other two out. Okay, so I've got both my B pillar mounts in place and I have both my rear or C pillar mounts in place. And I have placed a hoop on top. What I do is I make five of these hoops for every roof rack that I'm going to build. One is for the frame as you see here and uh, four will make up the cargo basket that sits on this frame. 
Uh, so they're all identical, that way they all stack perfectly even. Now I should say, this tube is uh, one and a quarter inch diameter, it is 090 wall, um, and it is bent at 90 degrees uh, on each end. Uh, I have about 14 inches of lead off until my bend begins. I have a 90 degree bend. I have approximately 33 inches between the bends and then another 90 degree bend and another 14 inches there. So there's your dimensions if you want them. Uh, it's a 75 degree angle, uh, 75, 77 degree, something like that, that is, exists here. That's gonna tail down to this mount and I'm gonna have to build a little um, support that comes off of the side of the mount with an angle built onto it that will uh, match up with the tube. So that's the next step. I'm going to go ahead and get that in place. Uh, I've shortened it to length and um, put it in place, make sure it fits up nice. We'll do the same with the other side and then we'll do those little supports and tack weld some stuff together. So here you see me bending the tube. I am using a die that has a four and a half inch center line radius. Now that's important to consider when you are figuring out the distance between bends as you see me doing here so that you wind up achieving the overall width that you're actually looking for. Um, so if you're using a die that has a four and a half inch center line radius, you can use the dimensions that I give you here in the video if you want to. But if you're using a different center line radius, you're gonna need to adapt for that. All right, so when we are making our uh, expedition baskets and our uh, uh, roof rack frame, we will need to butt weld uh, tubes together, which can be really challenging to get them aligned nicely and get them to stay dead straight. Uh, so an aid in that is a roll pin, which will fit inside of the tubing that you're gonna be welding. So I have created a whole bunch of roll pins there, and I'm gonna do two more, and on that way I will show you how I do it. It's very, very straightforward. I use thin wall tube, this is 065. My entire rack and um, basket are made of the same tube, 065 wall uh, by 1.25 inch diameter. Um, but anyway, my point is, even if I was using a heavy wall tube for my, um, for my structure, I would use a thin wall tube to create the roll pins because it's just so much easier and all they need to do is provide a little bit of spring pressure on the inside diameter of the tube to keep everything aligned. So again, that's what they look like afterwards. Basically, I'm just cutting about a three quarter inch strip out of them and then pinching them in with the vise. So let's get started. And again, I want to remove about three quarters of an inch. Now, they, this is for one and uh, a quarter inch diameter. You know, with different diameters, you might find that changes a little bit. I don't need to remove as much as I am, but I'd rather remove more and have a safety margin or a gap left over than remove too little and then have to, you know, and then squeeze it in, find that I actually have to remove more material. So I remove more than necessary. Okay, so now all I'm going to do is in the position it's already in, I'm just going to squeeze that in slightly, relax it, turn it so that I can get this lip compressed just a little bit. Again, not much. And then I'll drop it down and do, whoops, and do the same to this one. And then I'll test fit it. Now probably this is a little bit too big, but as always, better to, you know, in this case, better to go too big and be able to squeeze it down rather than have squeezed it down too much and have to expand it. Quick look at how this goes together. So there you are, it needs a little more pinching still, but we're very, very close. So I could see that it's too wide in its diameter, so I'll squeeze this and then probably I'll have to do the points again just a tiny bit. So here we go, reducing the diameter one more time, and again, not a lot, just until you can basically feel the metal yield. Turn it. Compress that so that you are creating more or less a circle again. And there we go. Let's try that. Very nice. So a little bit of friction, but not so much that I can't easily put it in. And same thing on that end. And that's all you need. And then that way, when we slide another piece of tube over there, it keeps it more or less straight, but more importantly, it keeps it aligned as to its diameter, and then we can put a straight edge over it and make sure that it's perfectly straight afterwards. There you are. Simple addition. I've got the rack all mocked up in position now, um, and I'm happy with it more or less. 
Um, but I do need to fix the way that these guys are sitting in there. You can see this one's not sitting properly at all right now. I've got to push that back a bit, which is affecting things back there a little. So that's a bit interesting. Anyway, what I'm going to do first is notch these saddles just a little bit deeper. Uh, and then that way this tube will sit nice and flat across the span. So the reason I have to do this is because that B pillar is crowned as you can see so therefore the tops of my tubes are sitting further outwards than the bottoms of the tubes. Alternately I could have just cut those tubes on angles um, so that they sat at 90 degrees and I wouldn't have had to have notched the uh, insides of the notches deeper um, but it's just a different approach you could do it either way so pick your poison. Okay everything's back in place I have flattened that bar so now once I pull that down, you can see the outside cope is just about perfectly flat, maybe a sixteenth of an inch, which is no problem at all. And the other side would be the same, but it's just not wanting to sit down for me. So now that everything is pretty much in position and I'm really happy with everything, we're only at a half a degree angle down towards the front of the vehicle, which is actually totally reasonable. The entire vehicle is on a little bit of a rake, so that matches up really nicely. I like my angle here. I'm happy with that. I like my positioning here. Very good. I'm going to come around this way, we can see we've got just enough clearance to squeeze the top out of there, which is good. I might go a tiniest bit wider than that, but that's pretty close to where we'll end up. And over on this side, I've got to make a little adjustment. This isn't sitting properly here, but that's because this saddle is sitting up. It's just a bit awkward, so I think what I'm going to do is just pull that down by hand, uh, protect the paint first, of course, and tack weld both of these uh, B-pillar mounts in place, and then it'll give me something firm to work backwards from. All right, I am happy with it. It's tacked in place. It looks really nice and even. Got my angles the way I want them. I got my stands in position. Uh, the driver's side, I may mess with yet, but I'm very, very happy with the passenger side. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and tack up this joint right here. I'll tack it in probably three places so that it can't rotate or move on me in any direction. And uh, then we'll move down to here and we will cut a little brace piece to go in this area and uh, then we'll move to the driver's side. I should mention always disconnect the vehicle battery before welding anything on the vehicle uh, otherwise you stand the risk of uh, short circuiting the computer. Tack together in three spots and it's nice and rigid nice and straight and we're now ready to tack this mount together and as you can see I have already cut a piece of uh, material for that it's uh, 2 inch by I should say 3 16 by 2 inch flat bar and I have cut it at 90 degrees on this side and at uh, 88 degrees or sorry at 82 degrees on that side or an 8 degree cut so very, very straightforward. At the top, it's one inch. At the bottom, it's one and a quarter inches. And it lines up really nicely. So I'm ready to tack that in place. And then we'll move over to the driver's side. There we go all tacked up so that's all nice and solid and as far as this part of the rack goes she's pretty well done and ready for removal and full weld up but of course I have to finish the other side and then we'll uh, create uh, the bottom hoop of the basket and put the basket up there or put the, the bottom hoop up there make sure it's fitting really well and then we'll probably remove everything and finish building the basket tomorrow uh, the customer needs to pick up his vehicle today this is all the time he could give me for fit up purposes so that's fine at least we got the rack done and that's the critical part um, like i said i can build the um, the basket to fit it afterwards but we'll uh, we'll do the bottom hoop and get that placed on today anyway and there it is the rack itself is all tacked together. I did those last few tacks down there. And I have added the top or the bottom hoop of the basket and I have U-bolted it in place. Of course, these welds will be completed later and then they'll be blended out flush so we won't have that little gap between the tubes. They'll sit right flush together. But there you are. That's the way I do it. And the deal is you can then position the uh, basket kind of where you like on the rack. You could move it further to the back. 
um, up to the point that it's going to interfere with the, um, you know, with the uh, hatch opening. Uh, or you can move it forward all the way so that it uh, hangs considerably over you know, the, the driver's head. Um, totally up to you. But it's a good little setup. Uh, what I'm going to do now is add the top hoop and a bunch of supports obviously in between the two and then we'll put some supports on the bottom of the basket and add an expanded steel floor to it so that it's got a million tie down points and really solid um, footing for anything that the customer would want to put in there. So that's that. Let's start building the basket itself now or continue building the basket itself. So I removed the rack from the vehicle, fully welded it and I blended out the uh, weld, the butt weld in the tube here. So this side has been blended, as you can see, nice and smooth, whereas this side still has the weld, and I'll blend that in just a minute. And the reason for blending that out is, one, to make it look a little better, and two, so that you don't have a high point on which the, um, the basket will rest. You want it to rest on a nice flat surface. So just blend those out gently using a flapper wheel uh, or flapper disc. Basically, you just want to follow the, uh, the radius as closely as you can and finish it off by just smoothing over it a few times. I'll show you that on the tripod now. And there you are. The top side is nice and smooth. Now I'll just reposition this so that it's in a more comfortable position for me to do the rest of the tube. And we'll wind up with a really nice smooth top to it. A uh, smooth, smooth uh, transition the whole way around the tube actually. So I must apologize, I don't have a lot of footage of the basket build itself, but it's reasonably straightforward. You can see here the bottom hoop, and to that I add a top hoop. As you can see here, this is a full length basket rather than a half length, but similar idea. And some bottom bracing with some cross members like you can see. And then uh, we add some of my logo plates as uh, side supports like you can see on the finished version here. And weld it all together with an expanded steel floor. All right, so we got the, uh, the rack back from Powder Coat and I have installed the rack itself. A rivets there and a rivet there. And of course the tops are riveted in all four positions. And that is all it takes for the rack itself. Very, very simple and easy install. The bottoms of these tubes are plugged with plastic caps. We have rubber isolators installed up here. And we are now ready to install the rack itself, which is sitting in the back of my truck. So it's not the massive rack, that's gonna go on a GMC Jimmy. It is the smaller rack on top. We'll uh, pop that up there once my uh, friend Sean arrives to give me a hand. And then we will bolt it down using some U-bolts. And here's Sean now. And there we are, parked out in the sunshine and ready for the customer to pick up. I have left a few notes on the side regarding some rust issues and stuff that he has. He wanted me to go over everything, so I've done that for him. But the main parts of the project are, of course, the roof basket, which is complete. And as we discovered, the uh, cross member was rotten, and that's been replaced as well. And there's the end of it right there that supports the shock tower. So this is the two-door half-length roof rack and expedition basket as offered by Balmer Fab. Got our initials burned into it there as you can see. This is also offered in a full-length variety, but this is the half-length. Both the full-length and the half-length use a rack which is mounted to the vehicle itself via either rivets or riv nuts, depending on customer choice. And they both include an expedition basket, which is then bolted to that rack. They have an expanded steel floor so that you can have virtually infinite spots to uh, secure um, uh, bungee cords to. And of course, ratchet straps can be placed all around the edges and through the logo plate here as well in multiple places. So lots of opportunity to tie down your gear 
Maximum capacity rating has not been tested, although I have had 200 pounds plus in them as a dynamic load, so pretty hefty. And uh, again, that uh, that's, hasn't been pushed much further than that, so we don't know exactly how much one of these will take. But certainly 200 pounds dynamic, no problem at all, so probably about 350 static based on that dynamic load. But there you are. One new uh, improvement that I've included lately is just little plastic caps on the bottoms of these tubes. We used to just leave them open, but now they're capped just to make it a little more professional. Like most of my products, this roof rack and basket have been sandblasted prior to a rust resistant primer being applied and then a top coat of a uh, textured black powder coat for a very fine look that will last ages. So thanks again so much for joining me here at Balmer Fab. We'll see you again next time.